Creativity. Such an evocative word, isn't it? For a very long time, actually, basically until I started grad school, I used to think of creativity as this mysterious, almost magical act. Something like what you see in this picture. You have a light bulb, but you also have these colors floating around, there is lightning. You don't really know what's going on, really, right? And this is a notion that, it turns out, many of us hold. It's hardly surprising because it comes from our heritage, especially in Western civilization. It comes from Greek mythology, where creativity was a gift from the gods, from the muses. So even as I started to hear the expression creativity in organizations, creativity in business, I originally thought it was something like the use of arts for relaxation or the use of art and crafts for, I don't know, team building activities. And it was only later that they discovered that creativity in organization is something else entirely. Something powerful, even magical maybe, but not at all mysterious. Something that can be fostered, can be learned, and can be trained. I became fascinated by this concept and I decided to make it the focus of my research. And I'm going to share some of it with you today. So first of all, you might ask, what is creativity in organizations? Well, the classic definition used by scholars for many, many years is that it's the generation of ideas that are both novel and useful. Novel means that it's departing from what already exists, is new, original, simple enough. And useful means that it has to have some practical value. And you need both in order for something to be considered creative. So, for example, if you come up with an idea for a car with square wheels, that's novel, right? But it's not very useful. So it's not going to be considered creative in terms of creativity in organizations. The first question that I started to ask myself as I got, as I delved into this uh, field was, who is good at creativity in organizations? Who is good at creativity at work? And it turns out that we have a lot of preconceptions of lay theories about who is good or bad at creativity at work. And one of the most persisting ones is that creativity is young. This is hardly surprising, if you think about it, because the image of the young genius permeates our society, right? You can think about creators such as Mozart. Uh, Ten years old, he was already composing marvelous music. Or someone like Orson Welles, who, when he was only 27 years old, um, directed the movie that is largely considered the best of all times, Citizen Kane. And even when you turn to business, we are surrounded with these images of very successful young entrepreneurs, such as Mark Zuckerberg or Steve Jobs. And on the surface, there is even some evidence supporting this idea that creativity is young. Uh, many years of historiometric studies have shown us that creativity indeed tends to decline over time in many different fields. However, there are also many, many examples of successful older creators. So for every Mozart, you have a Giuseppe Verdi, the Italian opera composer, who created some of his best work when he was almost 90. For every Orson Welles, you have an Alfred Hitchcock, who directed the movie that is usually competing with Citizen Kane for the top spot as best movie of all time, Vertigo, when he was almost 60, and some of his best, most creative work when he was between the age of 50 and 60. And you might be surprised by that, but even when you turn to entrepreneurship, the phenomenon of old entrepreneurs, such as Paul Tarsner here, who is the CEO and founder of Pulp Works, who turns, which is a very successful company which turns garbage into sustainable customer products, is just one example of many successful old entrepreneurs. And when I say successful, I don't just mean they are as successful as the young ones, they're actually three times more successful than them, both in terms of securing funds and their survival of their companies. So what do we make of this information? On one side, we have these stereometric studies showing us that creativity declines, and on the other side, we have all these examples of successful old creators. So some scholars, including myself, came up with this idea, and you can be the judge whether this idea is creative or not, and the idea is that maybe what changes over time is not our creative ability. Maybe what changes are the stimuli that we need in order to be creative, our creative needs. In other words, 
it might be that the observed decline in creativity is not due to a decline in creative ability, but to the fact that we don't provide the correct stimuli to older workers in order to be creative. You can think about it like switching from a classic car to an electric car. They both work, they both get you where you need to go, but they need a different type of fuel. So why does this change happen? Well, the answer is pretty simple. We know that over time, the way we think, the way we organize knowledge in our brain, our mental structures, change dramatically. So you might wonder, what is a mental structure? And let me give you an example of that. Think about, let's make this exercise, think about a Disney movie. Okay? If you think about a Disney movie, different concepts will probably come to mind. You can think of animation, you can think of talking animals, you can think of songs such as Let It Go, which I think every parent in this room knows, and I'm not going to sing it, so don't worry, okay? Um, so you have all these different concepts, and you can also put it together, you connect them to each other. And it probably will look something like this. It can be different for every person. This is the mental structure that you have, or that I have at least, about a Disney movie. So what do we know about these mental structures is that ideally, for creativity, you need to have mental structures that are both complex and flexible. Complex means that you have many different concepts and many different connections between these concepts. And these allow you to come up with many different permutations of the same concepts and ideas. Flexible means that you are able to accommodate new concepts as you encounter them, and also new connections between the existing ones and the new ones. What we also know is that complexity and flexibility trade off over the career, over time. Complexity tends to increase, to increase because at the beginning you don't know much about the domain and you start learning and over time you start to have a lot of concepts and a lot of connections. But with complexity comes also rigidity. So you become fixated in your ways. So ideally, what we need to do in order to, to stimulate creativity in our employees is to provide them with the dimension that they're lacking. So novices need to nurture complexity because they need to know the boundaries of the domain in order to be able to push them. On the other side, older workers need flexibility in order to avoid hearing those expressions that are the classic expressions that no creator ever wants to hear. He's just repeating himself. She's just doing the same thing over and over again. So, what I told you so far is that mental structures for creativity are ideally complex and flexible. And these two dimensions tend to draw off over time, and this is why younger and older creators might have different creative needs. Hopefully, I was already able to convince you about this, but let me give you some evidence. My colleague Kevin Young and I conducted a study in the olive animation industry. Here you can see Finding Nemo. Uh, this is a, one of the most creative industries in the world, and we used this setting to study a specific question. Which type of knowledge is more conducive to creativity? Is it specialized knowledge, focusing on just one domain, but very much in depth? Or is it uh, diversified knowledge, which is that spans different areas, different domains? And what we found is actually very consistent with what I just told you. So on one side, we found that specialized knowledge has a very positive effect at the beginning of the career. And this is because it fosters complexity, which is what you need at the beginning. But it actually becomes constraining and even detrimental as career progresses. On the other side, diversified knowledge, which is something that fosters flexibility because it exposes you to different ideas, different notions, different fields, has an increasingly beneficial effect over time. These findings are not only consistent with the theory I just told you about, but are consistent with other findings from other scholars, which have shown that, for example, older innovators benefit more from a changing scenario, a changing work environment, such as the ones that are provided, for example, by corporate spin-outs, but they also benefit more from collaborating with people that come from different disciplines, different areas, different departments within their company. So, what do these results tell us? They tell us that the oft-argued decline in creative ability might actually just be a consequence of work environments not providing, not accommodating the creative needs of older workers. Going back to the car metaphor, it's like many, many companies nowadays are providing their employees with petrol, but older employees need electricity in order to be creative. And a key example of that that I can give you is job rotation. 
Job rotation is something that usually in company happens very much early on and then starts to disappear over time. This is paradoxical if your goal is creativity because you should be the other way around. If you want to keep flexibility alive, job rotation is a good way to do in that. And it's hardly surprising to find out that companies such as Pixar here and IDEO that are successful in keeping creativity alive in their older employees are actually doing it the other way around. They expose their employees to new projects in new areas. They encourage them to take courses related to their job. They even encourage them to take courses in areas that are totally unrelated to their job. Pixar offers to their senior employees courses in belly dancing, gardening, acting, and other many different activities like that. They encourage you to use some of your working hours to go outside and learn new things, explore the world. They nurture complexity, but at the same time, they keep flexibility alive. So going back to my original question, who is good at creativity in organizations? Who is good at coming up with novel and useful ideas? The answer that I have, and the one that I want you to take home with you today, is this. Everyone. Everyone has the potential to contribute with novel, meaningful ideas to their company. They, are ju they just have to be put in the conditions of doing so. I firmly believe that if we recognize the diversity of creative needs and we provide the correct stimuli to employees, all of them will be able to be creative. And not only that, to paraphrase Buzz Lightyear in Toy Story, we will be able to bring their creativity to infinity and beyond. Thank you.